myself a big old stroke and I have not. <laughs> just uh, just give your camera a nice little Dutch angle, okay? Mm. It'll make things much more unsettling. There you yeah, go. That'll People will love that. Mm -hmm. That's art, man. They, they have yeah, to feel unsettled when they're watching this or listening to it. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, not, the <laughs> we're not just scumbag critics. We are also artists ourselves, auteurs. If you auteurs, we are. We are. We've we've come a long way from our roots, um, which are basically <laughs> based in no kind of film at all. And uh, I know. Yeah, we, <laughs> we we like film. That qualifies us, doesn't it? <laughs> God damn, Clay. How the hell are you? I'm good. How are you, man? Not good. Not not. I was about to say not gad, but. I'm not gad either. I'm not bad. You're not gad. You're not dead. I'm not dead. Uh, so we, we 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 decided to watch a couple of movies, and I'm really glad we did because I, I was very, for one of them, I was really anxious to talk to you about it personally. And yeah, then, definitely. And then this other one that you recommended, First Contact, the first one I'm talking about is In a Violent Nature, but the second one was First Contact, which I did uh, watch and I don't know if you necessarily recommended it to me. You just said, "Hey, I watched this." <laughs> and I was like, it's okay. more and more of a factual statement than yeah. a recommendation. It was definitely a factual statement. So uh, I I decided to 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 take a look at that, and you decided to uh, catch in a violent nature, and here yeah. we are to talk about both of those. Uh, what do you want to start That's off right. first? Let's start off with uh, First Contact, and then we'll move on to In a Violent Nature. And I've okay. done, just, a, just to, to a caveat, I've done zero, zero uh, research on First Contact. So, okay, well, we're going to do some research on the fly right here. Right that's now. right. That's what the Googles is for. <laughs> Luckily, the computers are sitting right in front of us, and we can type <laughs> into the Googles, and it'll give us everything we need. That's right. All right, so sure. yeah, yeah. So first contact is a is a movie that came out uh, twenty twenty three, I believe. Yeah, it's it's uh, who knows. Sure, it yeah, seemed okay. Very, it's it seemed uh, very new. It did first uh, contact a horror movie uh, facts. Well, let's do that. It was directed and written by Bruce Wimple, who has done other smaller budget horror films. Apparently, he kind of sticks to. Um, practical effects, which is always cool. Um, now, this and this thing was lousy with CGI, so I don't buy it. Uh, <laughs> starring Miss Anna Shields, James Liddell, Lejean Woods. Uh, do I have the right movie? Because I don't recognize any Chris, of these people. Chris Simperman, yeah, James Liddell, okay, uh, Anna Shields, uh, Chris Simperman. Uh, yeah, it's the same one. Okay, because there right. is there are other movies called First Contact out there, but uh, yeah, but the, not this, but that's not the one. It's basically it's, it's a yeah low budget horror movie. So uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, can you break down what the hell happened? I'd love to if I could, but the film made no sense at all. <laughs> Damn, I was hoping to get some insight <laughs> from you on this one. I mean, what I can gather is, uh, okay, the basic setup is this. It's uh, siblings. Uh, dad vanishes. Um, you know, I don't want to say dead because he's just, no one's found him. So eccentric dad, got a house in the woods or out in the rural area, vanishes. And he's basically, he's making some kind of weird um, I don't know. It looks it, basically the guy is must be seven degrees of genius because he's basically building CERN in his barn. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's this multi-dimensional machine. Um, he vanishes off the face of the earth, and then his kids go in and inherit the house, and then start jerking around with the same machine that made him poof off into La La Land. And what that's, we get from there. <laughs> Is very confounding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, I'm going to first off, let's start this off that there may be potential spoilers for all these movies. These are these aren't just That's a contemporary correct. general review. These are we may go in depth on certain things. So if you haven't seen these movies, go out, watch them, come back, listen to us critique uh, what we did and what we did didn't like about these movies. But I, I God, uh, you know, I was taking notes actually during this film because I figure oh, after, good after on the, you. Yeah. After the first fade out. I was like, okay, I've got to, I've got to take notes on how many fade outs we're seeing here because it, it took me back to Veronica a lot. Oh, it it made me, <clears throat> it made me want to hurl uh, my glass at the screen after about the third one. And if you watch the movie, uh, I don't know why you would after we. we I, I actually liked it just <laughs> in certain I, yeah, ways. I, I did like too. it. I, yeah, I'll go to that later. But yeah, yeah, like um, but. 
uh, oh my God. I, I, and I, I always, I, I know that's what we're doing. I, I know we're criticizing a movie. I hate crapping all over people's art because I know that making a movie, even a bad one is an incredibly difficult endeavor, but geez, like the editing in certain spots of this yeah. is unfathomable. Like it's just so distracting. If you're aware of the editing, it's something's not right. And they just do yeah. these fade to black that would you would just looking at it objectively you'd be like this is terrible i need to find a different transition at the but end of this felt, clip those, those fade to blacks felt like soap opera transitions on television uh, the there's the big face the big reveal it fade to black comes back up you're in the same place same people are there and i'm like why did we just fade to black it doesn't make any sense why not just a, a cut or an uh, exterior edit you know I, I know small budget filmmakers love to do their exterior shots so why not just throw it in there <laughs> This uh, take, take a page from from our friend uh, Mike Kuchik, who just loves to show the same outside uh, shot of that same house a hundred times. <laughs> but th this is in the, the filmmaking was weird, and you're right. There's something that felt off about it. It's kind of like watching a U Bowl film, or that it, <laughs> that they're sitting there going like when they're doing the two head shots or the two shots of people talking. It just seemed like they're the cuts were cutting off before people were talking or after the, I know they're trying to make it a seamless cut between two people having a conversation, but the cuts back and forth to the face was totally distracting. And I was like, uh, who's <laughs> talking right now? What's going on? Why a, a cynical person might say that those were filmed not in the same day, week or continent. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. There probably was, uh, limited uh, i i couldn't find any information on this by the way i i did find a couple of reviews <laughs> of the film i was trying to look for you know because sometimes the directors or whatever do interviews and maybe i just didn't do a deep dive enough on it which is probably true uh, i didn't i didn't dive too deep so there probably is a review or, or an interview <laughs> out there with the director but uh, i didn't put in the uh, you the, know the, maybe the, you didn't do your due diligence. Well, I didn't either. Like, I just, I, I, like, my lazy ass was just like, well, I watched it. That's not enough. I just, I watched the film. I did my job. I, I watched it. Now, tell me, were you, were you thinking this is a film that we probably should have watched uh, as a watch through for our other series on the channel? That's a good question. Not really. Not no? like, and that, that thought comes into play a lot. And, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't know that the film really gave us enough. It might have, you never know. Yeah. I mean, it, um, I, I just, I, I wasn't making a lot of cracks in my head. And if I'm, oh, if yeah. I'm making a whole bunch of jokes, like I was sat there and watched it with my partner and, you know, if I'm sitting there, my basis for that is when my brain is just screaming out yeah. all these these riffs <laughs> that i that i will piss her off with if i go into two she likes it when i riff movies to a certain degree but right. then it, it gets annoying um that wasn't happening with this one i was just sitting there watching like shaking my head going like what <laughs> are we doing and then just throwing my hands up every time that there was a scene an inconsequential scene by the way ended fades to black and then goes on to something else yeah it, and and the acting oh god yeah yeah the acting was uh was subpar um you know i have seen <laughs> i've seen that james liddell now i he i recognize him because i've I seen him in another movie so i did look up his credits and he was in the hell house origins uh the carmichael okay. house now i really okay. enjoy the hell house series I, okay. I, I i enjoy the hell out of them so but i'll be honest with you i can't remember him that well in carmichael house i know he played like a pivotal role in it but can't really remember too much of what he did so i'm not sure if that's on me or if that's on what he did <laughs> but <laughs> or if he just blends into the tapestry of mediocre horror movies that we've yeah. watched it was um it, I, i'm struggling to even remember like it was it was wild because i feel like it was not a very deep or complicated plot but it was made complicated oh, yeah. by just the baffling creative choices <laughs> yeah to, to me it, it it got really complicated it really got not complicated but confusing um it, it reminded me of the three body problem i don't know if you've ever seen that netflix series or read the book <clears throat> it's just about yeah i, I watched a yeah. netflix series yeah so you know it, it, it had that kind of vibe about it not in that not in such a uh 
physics oriented and scientific way that three body, but it also gave me laser ba- laser blast vibes too. <laughs> <laughs> the, it did. It did. MSD three thousand, where the guy gets infected by the alien and he starts changing and uh, he's going around killing everybody, and it just like, oh, this is kind of like laser blast in a way. It uh, kind of was. I'm, it's funny that you say that. And the guy that uh, the actor was that Liddell that played the the um, the dude that got infested with whatever the bad no, mojo the was. He was the brother. Okay. The acting in that I was my one crack that I thought was pretty funny is that I said he's Jim carrying on was kind of was my one uh, was my one zinger through that. This this dude's acting was just over the top oh yeah and then the counterpoint was everybody else the people that they chose for the leads in the in the show took their zanny bars before starting (laughs) their work day they were just so goddamn bland there's a specific incident in the movie where they're actually getting attacked by this (laughs) alien extra dimensional creature they somehow she somehow scares it off with a a can a blowtorch can and they look around and like where'd it go i don't know all right well back to work They've just been <laughs> stalked and, you know, it's like, no, there's still an alien monster around here. You're not getting concerned about that. It's yeah. The, the Xanax level of concern was uh, getting to me too. Like, you know, before you start your acting day, I need you to take enough Xanax to where if you were on a plane and the, the engines failed, you would be totally fine with uh <laughs> what what transpires next i will say though that uh for such a low budget movie uh the creature effects weren't bad i yeah. kind of like the creature effect it kind of yeah. reminded me of um if anybody's ever played the resistance games on the yeah. playstation there's this creature with multiple eyes i was like okay i, I kind of like the creature in this is a pretty good monster 100% I love the creature effects uh that's all his practical stuff that they're talking there was CGI in here that was goofy but the the, <laughs> the yeah the practical monster effects were were amazing and outstanding so I have to give him a lot of props I, I I think overall I think there's some great and interesting theory and thoughts in about this movie i think he was just really limited by the scope and the resources that bruce wimple had around that you know he had these really i i didn't understand a lot of it i knew there was an alien force coming towards earth right (laughs) and everyone knew there's some kind of alien force but that's what i thought they were talking about but it turns out the dad had pulled in some extra dimensional creature one's good and one's supposedly bad one is bad and they were trying to stop a war from potentially breaking out between the aliens or get one start. It, it was really convoluted and I was trying to wrap my head around it. I could appreciate the effort it took. Uh, I'd rather read a book about it though. Maybe if he could go in some more in depth about everything, I would like, okay, I can get it. But in the movie, it just did not come across the screen too well. I, and I, I tend to go to, uh, for some reason, I always tend to make musical metaphors and comparisons when I'm watching a movie like this. And, and I'm sure you can relate to this. If you ever listen to, and I'm sure you have, you listen to a band that you're like, okay, this is murdering my eardrums, but there's something here. Yeah. There's an energy, there's a heart, there's, um, there's a, there's a creative energy to this. That's that someday is going to be big. Like I remember hell, it was high on fires first album. I was listening to that. And this friend of mine was like, you like this? And I said, I don't know, man, there's something here. There's yeah. something here. It's, it's raw. It's, 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 it's rough to get through, but you know, there's something here and that's, you know, and that they're, they're like, you know, considered one of the best heavy metal oh, yeah. bands ever now. And, um, you know, a lot of fans probably like that first one, but that's kind of the metaphor that I, I yeah. went to There's And there is something here. There's something, there was something about the way it was shot. There's something about what was intended. It fell far short of whatever it was intended, yeah. but it, it was still like, I still enjoyed watching it and I still enjoyed having watched it, even though yeah. if you recommend it to anybody, they'll be like, why did you recommend I yeah. watch this and movie? I, this I know failure we, of cinema. I know we 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 trash we trash on it here a little bit, you know, and the uh, you know it's. I didn't have a problem with it either. I I I gave it a like. Yeah. I gave it a thumbs up on Prime or whatever because, you know. Oh, absolutely! Even if, I did too. Yeah, even if it failed. For help, 
Go to its computer. <laughs> Technology, <laughs> folks. My apologies. Well, hello, Siri. Thanks for coming in. We wanted to talk uh, to you. No, give, me, give me just a second and I'll fix All right. that. I'll just do the humming music. I unplugged it, did it? Did. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, but. Yeah, I would definitely give this a. I, I would recommend check it out. It's got some interesting thoughts and ideas. There, I think it was poorly executed. I do want to point out some things that I did see in the film. Okay. Um, uh, let's go to other than the fate of the blacks, which I definitely marked down here in my notes. I'm glad you mentioned those because they made me quite angry. <laughs> there's th there's one odd thing where they mentioned Debbie, and Debbie's the name of a dog. Um, I'm not sure why the father decided to call his dog Debbie. Uh, it, it was alluded to that maybe it might have been a girlfriend of his, but they, everyone said it was a dog. So just in case anyone was going to. Oh, shit. Clay's dropped and I'm here by myself. What am I going to do, guys? I'm going to have to edit. That's what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Let me send him another invite. Take He's back, out, folks. <laughs> Did you accidentally uh, leave the studio? No. It just oh, really? You're done, my friend. Oh, you know? Okay. <laughs> but I'm oh, sorry about that. You were yeah. saying uh, Debbie the dog. And as I recall, we never get back to Debbie. Who is she or why was she mentioned? <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know why she was uh, the dog was mentioned. I, it's... <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. I didn't get that part. I don't know why they called it Debbie. I don't know they were ta why they're talking about a dog. Um, we named the dog Indiana. <laughs> uh, there is a there's a fade out. Uh, uh, so the the brother and the sister go out and they see this light in the middle of the field, right? And right. they they both get out of the car and they're looking at this light. <laughs> and suddenly uh, the light comes towards a girl, but uh, the brother blocks the light and the light hits him and he gets possessed and he uh, and he goes <laughs> goes unconscious right there in the middle of this field. You know they've driven out here to see this thing that was miles away, and they just took, they go <laughs> they go a fade to black yet again. And uh, when they fade in again, he's on the couch in their house, perfectly fine. Now. She's not a very big woman. She seems very petite. And yeah, about he, maybe five one. Yeah, and he seems a little tall and probably has some weight on him and dead weight at that. So I'm trying to think, how did he get how did she get him not only into the car to drive him all the way back home, but get him out of the car, up the stairs, into the onto the couch, <laughs> and he doesn't have like multiple contusions or abrasions <laughs> being scraped on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like have my, you ever been uh, drug like around here yeah. have you yeah. ever been drug around while you're unconscious clay not yet but i'm sure it'll happen at some well point. i have and it sucks <laughs> <laughs> i got road burn on my buttock <laughs> no it i haven't very, i haven't acted that's what, but that I, was, I, I, was <laughs> it, <laughs> it, kind of a inexcrutable film is very uh odd movie that i you, these kind of movies, you can't judge them against good movies. You have to judge them yeah. against other bad movies and, right. and judged against other bad movies. <laughs> it was pretty fun. I mean, like, I think that if you're a horror fan, you're just different. You're like, yeah. you're going on to, to, and God, how lucky are we to have something like Shudder yeah. where you can just watch just bananas, crazy stuff like this without... In my day, we had to go to the video store and rent a piece of shit and come back with it. <laughs> not, not, but, we're uh, not sponsored, by the way, but uh, we would love a sponsor from Shutter. Oh, God. Yeah. That would great. That, that'd be, I'm sure they'd be like, oh, let me take a look at your viewership. Yeah. Come back to us when. Uh, uh, come yeah. back to us in years from now. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I, you know, if you, if you like baffling entertainment, uh, check it out. If you want an actual good movie, you might. I don't know. Maybe you're a snob. Maybe you maybe you're pretentious. Maybe you're not a good person. I don't know. <laughs> and now we can judge this movie on our superficial <laughs> scientific rating system. That's right. I would, I would have to give it, let's see, an, an avocado pit as well as a side of guacamole. That's what I give it. I don't, I'm not I'm, I'm standing gonna, by that. I'm going to give it uh, I'm going to give it 
two out of five outlets on the power strip that's needed to uh, generate the energy needed for this CERN device that dad built yeah. with duct tape and tinfoil in the shed. Oh, that's the, good. The I like that. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. I remember great. when you were running those numbers by me about how you came up with that system. And I was just very amazed that you had this knowledge of physics. Um, so, I know. I, I remember yeah. you telling me that I probably should seek help and, and for my <laughs> for my issues. But I'm glad you didn't. That was first contact on Shutter. Check it out if you wish. Uh, but the reason that anybody is probably watching this is to get our take on the uh, the very popular in a violent nature, which is the Canadian horror film that's uh, kind of out there in the ether now that people are talking about. And we both saw it recently, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what you thought about it. Yeah, so uh, th this movie is by Chris Nash. It's uh, it says it's not rated, but it it certainly should probably be rated R. <laughs> hard R, hard, hard R. R. Uh, this is one of those films that I had heard about. I you know I not really heard about. I'd seen trailers of it, and to me, it looked like an A twenty four. If A twenty four did a slasher film, just from yeah. the theatrical trailer, there's this moodiness. You see the the this monster the slasher walking through the forest it's shot really well and it has these uh you know these you know these cool lingering shots so i was going into it in a certain mindset and i had no idea where what what the movie is going to entail where we're going to see this movie you know whose point of view we're going to see the movie from but when i was in the theater we sat down and i realized what was happening which is basically the story is being told from the eyes of the killer uh, that if if Jason was just risen from the grave in part six and he <laughs> and we followed Jason throughout instead of the the main characters, the final girls and everybody instead of the main cast, we follow Jason. This is probably what he'd be doing uh, if he, he was kind of like a mindless zombie who just returned from the grave. It was a it was a very interesting take on the genre. Now, it's one of the and you see this so much in horror movies is that uh, the marketing behind them is just over the top hyperbolic, like a new voice in horror. You're yeah. going to poop your pants. This is just <laughs> bananas. It's crazy. And the more hyperbolic the language, the more jaded, cynical horror fans like us are going to be like, all right, come on, let me see what you got. Yeah. And, you know, they do everything intentionally. It's based, it's a very interesting premise. It's basically the ASMR of, um, of horror movies. And, and I mean that literally, like if yeah. you enjoy ASMR, especially like nature sounds, it's that through the entire runtime. And it's weird because it actually contradicts the horror. You're seeing just horrific things happen on screen, yeah. but there's, there's literally no soundtrack. It's all just the chirpy, crunchy, like birds tweeting sounds uh, of the forest. And the only thing that's, that's a menacing you know energy in this in this whole forest is that guy yeah <laughs> this is the jason Voorhees looking dude yeah and he, his his character name is johnny in the film and <laughs> we uh close. yeah i know it, it's but it, it's obviously it's obviously an homage to friday the 13th and i mean the, there's nothing that they're doing that this that nash is doing in this film that if you saw this as a regular slasher film you wouldn't be surprised though you've got no. the kids out in the the kids that are out in the woods they they do something to make johnny rise from the grave and then johnny just starts going on a killing spree uh except we're just seeing it from johnny's perspective and the only and the only story or even music that we do hear in the movie is coming from the characters as he's approaching like the campsite or he's approaching yeah. somewhere else where people are you'll start hearing the music from that they're playing on their own radios or whatever. So uh, I thought that was a really clever and great way to portray this killer stalking through the woods. Cause you know, he's not listening yeah. to music. He doesn't have a soundtrack in his head. And yeah. He doesn't like to bump some crunchy riffs. He's <laughs> not, that's not his thing. It's, yeah. Um, it, it's, and I found out a little bit about this movie. They had to reshoot about 70% of it because mm -hmm. the, um, the lead, uh, you know, the star of the movie, which is basically the, you know, the serial killer, this unkillable, you know, supernatural rotting serial killer is um, the actor fell sick and they were like, OK, well, we'll just find somebody else, somebody roughly the same size. But as soon as they started to reshoot it, they realized that his everything about him, it it 
is nothing like the other guy. The way right. he steps, all of his, all of the nuances of acting are totally different. So they had to completely reshoot it. All, like a good seventy-five to eighty percent of the movie was, yeah. was redone. No, the, it, it's interesting the, that they they had the the production issues that they did. Um, they also had writing issues um, where Nash. Uh, and we'll get to this later where Nash had um, several ideas for what he wanted to do for an ending. And he said like by the fourth or fifth draft, I think what we're seeing on the screen is like the fourth or fifth draft because he wasn't happy <laughs> yeah. with what's before. Um, but back to like the, the story itself and you know, what story there is, there's not really a story per se. You, 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 all the story you pick up is from the kids talking that's only because johnny's in the vicinity he's watching them stalking them and they're explaining who johnny is and the the legend of him and you get this back history and story which is cool i like it i can compare it to something else that uh, it's out there that's popular that doesn't have any sort of kind of backstory like that does it rhyme <laughs> with um a uh, rare arriver it, it, it's similar to that yeah yeah okay okay <laughs> so that, yeah so so in a violent nature does have that going for it too um it, it, i think seeing it in the movie theater too and i'm seeing it with you know there's several people there's a lot of people in the theater actually i'm not oh, gonna that's see good it. yeah there was there was it wasn't, wasn't packed but there's enough there that we all could comment and not be pissed off that someone's talking it's one of those things where there's so much silence and no talking and long shots of walking that it, it's hard not to say something and it's hard to not comment on that yeah. i mean and you know Okay, the the big, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be mean, but the, okay, the cop out is that it's like, well, that's stylistically, that's what we were going for. You get to literally the 30 minute mark before anything significant happens in this. There's one kill yeah. in the beginning that's, that's, it's all screen. Of, yeah, that's kind of mad. It's okay, but it doesn't, it really doesn't give you a great sense for where the film's yeah. going aside from the pacing of it. But if you watch the trailer for this film, you see this montage of, of this dude doing his best Jason Voorhees, uh, you know, like Kane Hodder, Jason impression of, of, yeah. of, of kind of lumbering through the forest and then it cuts and he's still lumbering and then it cuts and he's still lumbering. And yeah. you're like, okay, that's a pretty cool shot. You see that a thousand more times during this yeah. film they they milk that goat until <laughs> the goat is dehydrated it's just they they do it to an in, ex, just a ridiculous amount in fact i wrote a haiku about this film if you'd like to for me yeah to yeah it let's hear quick. it let's hear it so uh jason Voorhees flick no canadian homage filler but good kills <laughs> thank you snap yes love yes. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you, you bring up a great point that uh it, and i don't know see i'm torn between that because there, there's there's moments when we're watching johnny literally walk for maybe three minutes screen time and yeah. you're just like okay i i'm into slow burns i get you know and then it'll cut and then he's in another location that's great <laughs> but then it cuts immediately from that and he's in another, another location i would say well why can't you just cut similarly why 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 you have to do three minute walking uh yeah. walk you know it, it, it was odd in its editing when it came to choosing whether we're going to see johnny in another place or if we're just going to see him walk 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 um i i don't know if it was exactly successful and what it wanted to do in that area uh i i think uh the lack of the music and the the sounds of nature really made it a better experience uh Watch it with it? headphones if you're going to watch it. Like okay. I, I, I watched it on my computer and I had these exact headphones on, and these are these are meant for you know bass guitar, and yes. it it was it's nice. It was nice listening, but it's nice to the point to where you're like, oh okay, oh look at that guy, um, totally <laughs> dis dismantling this person and turning them into human cutlets. You know, I could really go for a nice nature vacation <laughs> right now. It's yeah. it's so contradictory to the uh, what's going on on screen. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, barring that, um, I, I wasn't looking for any kind of uh, complicated plot. I, I wasn't looking for any kind of uh, uh, discernible look into human nature and the the because to me, what was going on in the background when we are hearing the plot of what the kids were going through, it, it was your basic slasher plot. There was nothing about it that was artsy it was kids wanting to have sex it was kids wanting to uh, get 
have do the cocaine or <laughs> or or the marijuana, uh, whatever the kids do these days. It, it, they you know, were just... contemptible as characters. You just right. wanted them to get picked off. I kept like I remember texting you as I was watching it, saying, "Kill these Canadians faster." <laughs> and it's nothing against Canadians; they just happen to all be Canadians. But it's like murder them faster. I just <laughs> like it, it's just it's such a slow burn, but you're you're getting to the same end result, and it's, yeah, it, and it's it's literally, it's just the exact same um, template as any other slasher film. If, if you yeah. like slasher films, it's a kind of a must watch, but it's, there's not, there's not really anything that groundbreaking. Yeah. Here. So yeah, you're exactly right. There's nothing groundbreaking. You, there's nothing in looking into the human condition and yeah, we just want to see those kills from the killer's point of view. And we got to mention that the, the, he was, he, he rose from his grave because someone took an amulet uh, I guess a personal amulet of his from the grave marker. And then that stirred him up and he picked him up. I mean, he's, that's his goal is to get this amulet back and he's killing everybody in his path to get this little amulet. Uh, that's going to come into play maybe soon uh, when I talk about other things, but uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about the kills in, in the oh, movie. Oh God, there's, they, 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 they go from good to good. As soon as I was starting to get really, kind of annoyed with uh just the lack of action they they give you the first kill and you're like oh okay word word yeah. that's that was good i mean it's, the kills in this are not just good they're freaking amazing <laughs> yeah yeah there was uh i i would say i was disappointed in that first kill because we don't really see it on screen it kind of you kind of see him reaching for the guy and then the camera backs off you just hear maybe some crunching or whatever and then you see Johnny walk by the corpse, but it doesn't really show it except, you know, like in a blur, which is an odd choice. But that said, <laughs> the rest of the kills, other than the drowning one, there's a drowning one that wasn't too impressive just because it was a drowning. No one's yeah. impressed by water going in your lungs. Jesus. No, people. God. I mean, you, you have to actually be experiencing it before it's exciting. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I, I, I have my favorite kill. Now, there is a notorious kill in this movie that people do talk about a lot. And yeah. shit, I told you there's going to be spoilers, so we're about to spoil this right now. Yeah, um, so you've been warned, so don't been warned. cry like a like a little skin now, girl. I will say it's not my favorite kill, but uh, what 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 say you regarding it? Oh, it's 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 kind of an obvious one for me. It's the lookout one where you know it's the lookout kill where yeah. she's she's out on the cliff. The one it, it, it's weird. I have a, a slight problem with it because uh, there's a continuity problem when he it's one of these yeah. instances where she's bleeding out of her mouth before she actually gets stuck. And it yeah. was, I can't believe that they didn't spot that. Maybe it was one of those things to where it's like, ah, it's too late. We've already got all the footage. So <laughs> you just uh, didn't notice that you're something. It's like, yeah, but they fought, they redeem themselves immediately and do something so outlandishly ghoulish that I was like, okay, this, that was friggin' bananas uh you you've yeah. won me over now i we don't have to describe it but uh there was a you could see it on youtube all over the place but it, it's notorious and i remember being in the theater and everyone in the theater is like whoa shit. <laughs> And we, even, we were like, oh, man, that fucking is badass. Well, I bet that was fun to be in a live, you know, like with yeah. people. It, it was. And that's what I really enjoyed about it was that, that we we're around, not like I said, maybe like 20, 25 people in the theater. It was, yeah. wasn't was packed, but enough there that we were all like looking at each other. You see that shit? <laughs> oh, yeah, we saw that. You know, we were just commenting. And then uh, 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 my favorite kill is... Uh, the probably the last one where no not the last one um it's the the log splitter kill oh I, that one was that was awesome i i thought it was pretty brutal it probably could have been a little bit more brutal in fact i thought it was going to go be being go to like a terrifier kind of kill yeah yeah i thought that. so too because i was sitting there saying is he gonna is is the wood is, is the guy going in the wood chopper head first or crotch first was mm -hmm. my comment that's what and, that was what i was thinking yeah, they then they kind of subverted expectation on that. The director wanted that to go on longer and have more more limbs affected, but it was the last thing that they filmed. Yeah. And um just logistically they had to wrap it up quicker. And he said also I was kind of concerned that the audience would only stick it out for so many limbs getting cut up, but it was 
it was expertly done. It was, um, it was something that you could only kind of pull off with, uh, you know, contemporary technology yeah. to make it look that seamless. Like the camera doesn't cut away once. There's yeah. no cuts to hide the uh, the fact that it was obviously a, it obviously it had to be a prosthetic unless this guy is a uh, actual murderer. But it, <laughs> right, it was yeah, so we well done. Saw a snuff film or something, but yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was slow and a brutal kill. And I I remember being uncomfortable watching it. Just in fact, I was like, Jesus Christ! And the, all I could think of was like, <laughs> you know, I sometimes put my my I put myself in the place of the victim yeah. sometimes. Yeah, like, definitely. what would I be experiencing in this moment? And it would just be utter terror. Be and, utter, just just crushing, just bone crunching pain, yeah. horror. You know, it 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 was wild. I also like the um the over. What would you call that? Like a dolly shot. That was like it was basically it was a drone shot o overhead where I had to rewind it. Like how this other guy die? It was so seamless where he just throws the axe and then saunters forward and he <laughs> got the guy right in the back of the head and then. Oh yeah. That was that. There were, um, you know, I mean, like, there there's are a, a lot, lot of filler, but there's it was a lot the of kills, a lot of head specific kills. I mean, yeah. everything's going for the head. <laughs> I mean, there was no, there's some, there's a that that one, the cliff, whatever the the infamous one was definitely a head thing, but yeah, it had a slight little twist about it. Um, <laughs> the the very last kill where he's just. I mean, just hammering home oh, yeah. on this fucking head. And you can see it's getting pounded into mush. And it was, I remember sitting there going, okay, this is cool. And it just became, why isn't he stopping? <laughs> it keeps going. And this, uh, and this is where we start seeing uh, the final girl who we've seen sporadically throughout the film. We haven't been following her at all, except through bits and pieces of dialogue. And I think she realizes that the amulet that she has has been causing all this and so she puts it down on a little gas canister because they had this whole plan to kill johnny yeah and it just totally backfires on him so she places the amulet down and takes off into the woods um there's scenes of her running through the woods i thought those were scenes were really well done there yeah uh she's screaming the the wildlife is all around her and she comes she, she goes in a circle i guess and comes right back and johnny's still whacking on this guy and it was <laughs> it was brutal brutally funny in a weird way and i think to me her leaving should have been the end of the movie right there yeah that was um and you know i've heard other people say that the ending is going to be kind of divisive my and i remember um texting you and you you were like they had me right up until the end and then the, the ending just totally blew it so i was i was really interested to see how it ends yeah and it, it's basically you know what it reminded me of it 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 it, it felt like somebody trying to be the Coen brothers and do no country for old men, but it's yeah. like, you are reaching, you're flying too close to the sun here, buddy. Yeah. You're not, it's, it just, it didn't, it didn't bug me probably as much as it did you, because I felt like it was just kind of encapsulated everything that frustrated me about the entire runtime of the film. I loved it as much as it frustrated me. Yeah. And the ending kind of encapsulated all the frustrations. It was, you know, it, it just it didn't seem to to be relevant to anything even kind of tangentially i i didn't understand like what the film was trying to say and i guess the the filmmaker well you just didn't get it it's like well no i mean i was watching i, sh I should <laughs> i should get it you know I, like i'm yeah. not saying that the it has to explode or that there's got to be a very kind of boilerplate gotcha moment at the end but it just it was this quiet kind of in inconsequential ending that didn't mean anything to me yeah yeah and i think if this ending had been in a, tacked on to another movie um that was similar but we we're looking at it from the the, the kid you know from a basic slasher point of view you know not from a basic slasher flick point of view and this was the ending that we got i can understand i would understand that ending and i would appreciate it you know they're trying to do something substantial with you know uh, what basically happens and again if you've made it this far you know you're gonna get spoilers we've been following johnny this killer the entire time we've been watching him walk through these forests for a fucking hour we've been watching these kills and we are invested in watching johnny i don't give a shit about any of these kids i don't give a shit about any of these characters that are dying because no. we just want to see johnny get his either get his amulet back or just keep killing and suddenly when he 
she puts the amulet down, she runs off, and there's a sequence. It, it 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 switches over to her perspective, and we no longer see Johnny for the for the last what fifteen minutes of the film. It's it's it, it is it's it's about a fifteen minute stretch where she's just in a car with the lady rescuing her, and the woman's t- telling a bear story. And um, yeah, I gotta say, uh, you know, Hobo with a shotgun did a bear stories a lot better than this, <laughs> than this film. Yeah, and, and I don't you know to me. I didn't care about this bear story. I knew it was, I knew it was, they're trying to do a reflection on the, hu- the violence of human nature. But really when we think about it, Johnny's not human, he's, no. he's, he's a monster. He's, he's basically an undead monster. So it all that yeah. just kind of flew out the window. It didn't matter to me. I didn't care that this final girl made it. I didn't care that she's sitting there waiting for him to come out of the woods uh, because I hadn't been even watching her this entire time. So I was just, I didn't care about her one lick. Yeah. I was infuriated that we were suddenly thrown into her story when it wasn't her story to begin with. And it's, uh, what was it? No, go ahead. I was was agreeing with you. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I I read Nash, uh, the director talking about how he came. I want to know what other endings he had for this movie. Um, Oh, he said that he wanted to, the the original ending that there was going to be fire and explosion and that they actually um, like, carry through on their wily coyote plan to undo him and you actually see cars exploding and buildings and stuff and i guess logistically it just wouldn't work which kind of means like you know how much this is going to cost yeah and he, we've already reshot half this goddamn movie yeah. no you're not doing that it's that's kind of dis- the way i took it oh that's disappointing because I, I imagine even if we saw johnny get killed from his point of pro- point of view uh killed or put back into the ground that would have been a satisfying ending imagine if they ended how they began it. They got the amulet up, they kill him, they go through all this, they stab his thing into the ground and he's buried and then they put the amulet back on and then they walk away. And we're yeah. left with we're left with that shot of that amulet on that pole just like it opened up and that's how it ends. You know? Yeah, or just something ridiculous like just the uh, just the head of the last victim and <laughs> we're just sitting there looking at this this gory head that's dripping blood and then Johnny walks off into the background to where he's actually blurry and then yeah. the credits roll over this gory bloody head. Yeah. Yeah, no that would be perfect too. I and I think there's so many good, good more lower budget kind of things that could have been done instead of this uh weird existential write-up at the very end that feels it just really feels like it is like a fifth draft of an ending that they just couldn't get right and it really ruined the experience for me and i was very I disappointed you. i think uh, to me her even her jumping into the truck and escaping that would have been a great ending yeah okay that's it we don't have to see anything else but it i don't know if they had to pad the runtime a little bit it's an hour and 34 minutes. Maybe he just needed to expand it just a little bit more to have more substance there so they can call it a movie. I don't know. I think he, I guess they wanted, he wanted some kind of artful ending, but it, it, it's reach exceeded its grasp. It was, it was, it, it was, it like bowed under the weight of its own, um, of its own presentation a little bit more, yeah. but I will say the one scene that um, my, probably my favorite scene in the whole movie and there were some really good ones, but um, I, one of my favorites was when Johnny is just sitting there and it's the the only time you get a real good look at his face. And he finds some keys with a little uh, toy car on the keys and he's just playing with this car and you just get this. It's this beautiful moment of him just kind of being this this neurodivergent child playing with a toy yeah. and looking at it. And then he realizes, oh, yeah, I got to kill these kids. And he gets up and does <laughs> just that. I love that moment. I thought it was really well done. Yeah, I, I love that moment. There's there's a lot of stuff to really like about this film. Like, I mean, I, I'm telling you right now that I hated the fucking ending. But everything before that was really cool. I liked what they were doing. I liked the concept. I thought it was very innovative. And I think if they could have just nailed it at the very end, it would probably I probably would have actually bought this and yeah uh, had it in my collection. But uh, unless there's like some kind of real director's cut or something else happens where they just change it completely, uh, it'll stay at a completely. Uh, what should I give this? Um, I'll give it a single axe head. OK, I will. I will give it two dunce caps in the corner. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. In Violent Nature, I would say definitely check it out. Watch it. Uh, the the yeah. ending's divisive, it seems, for everyone. Um, some people say I we, I wouldn't just 
like I wouldn't have got it. You know, maybe I just wasn't in the headset to really get that after going through all that, what we see. Um, I personally don't think so. I think uh, I totally got the ending. I understood what they wanted to do with the ending. I just didn't think it fit. Yeah, I think I think it's a hell of a lot cheaper to have two people uh, gun bumping at one another and driving <laughs> down the road in a truck than it is to have a conclusive ending to your film. But, it, you know, like if you like slasher films, then you can't not like this one right. on some level. It was I mean, even if you're just got ADHD to the point where you can't stand the uh, ASMR segments of him trudging through the woods and you just want to go to the kills, it's. I wouldn't suggest doing that. That's not the way you watch <laughs> movies, but it was it was definitely uh, had some payoffs that were worth it. Uh, yeah, and I think the the rating it actually has on IMDb is is a fair rating. It's pretty much a five out of ten. And okay, I would, I would say yeah, that's yeah, that, that's about what I would give it to. No, that um, sounds fair. Yeah. All right. Well, that was in a violent nature and uh, the lovely first contact. That's right. And uh, I guess that's about it. I don't think I have anything else. No, though we've been watching other, I've, I've watched plenty of other movies lately, but we can discuss those some other time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, guys, if you haven't yet, uh, go ahead and like this video, subscribe if you want, if you've made it this far. Geez, I should have said this right up front, but those are the things I always forget about. But yeah, the, if you liked it, hit that thumbs up, subscribe. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, hit that follow button, maybe leave a five star review and, or just five stars. You don't even have to review it. Uh, but. I think that's Gives about it. Yeah. yeah, that's it, y'all. Thanks for sticking with us. All right. Oh, uh, did we even introduce ourselves? I'm Jason. I'm Clay. And welcome to Cinematic Suffering. Goodbye. That's it. Goodbye. Good peace. Out later. Later.